Hi, welcome to Pattern Studio, I'm Rachel and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today I have a different theme for you, maps. Uh, poor old maps, really, paper maps, they've got such a hard time of it these days. We're using GPS, um, electronic devices to get directions and find our way around. No one's using the poor old map anymore. But that's okay, you know, it doesn't mean that they have to end up in the cupboard or we just throw them away. In fact, some maps, as many of you know, are beautiful enough to frame. If they're beautiful enough to frame, why not use them for your own lighting design? As you know, I create custom lampshade orders, and over the years, probably around several dozen have featured maps in one way or another. They are really popular, and it's not hard to see why. So there's different kinds of maps out there. One way that you can source them is just from old books. So, say an old atlas, pages like this, can work really well. You just literally, if I show you this example that I've made earlier, you can just literally lay the pages around the shade until you've, you've covered it completely. In a similar way, I'll show you another one, uh, is just old street directories. So this one, I took pages from a Melbourne inner city street directory and laid the pages around, again, until I've just got enough coverage. Uh, look, these kind of pages are amazing because they have that double-sided effect. When you turn the light on for the lamp, you get both sides of the page shining through and it just looks amazing. What are we gonna make today? Well, it's actually very special. I'm making a wedding present for a friend of mine and I thought it was a good example to show you uh, because they got married in Cuba and I thought wouldn't that just be so lovely to give them a lamp shade that featured Cuba I just thought oh, wouldn't that just be so romantic to be reminded of your wedding so I've had a really good look at the map and I've had a think about how I want to lay the pieces out around the shade and how it's going to fit it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle so I call, this, I call this stage the pegging stage, where pegs are my best friend. So I roughly cut the pieces, leaving enough space, obviously, for the top and the bottom to wrap around the top and bottom of the shade. But I've pegged the pieces on just so I can get a sense of, is this really what I want to do before I start pasting? So I kind of figured that this is going to be the front of the shade, and that's going to fe feature Cuba. And then as it wraps around a little bit more, we're going to get to the end of the map, so I'm going to have a join here. But then I, th I thought on the back this would look really cool, like all the, the images of the people and um, more information like that. It just kind of adds a little bit extra interest. So then that's going to wrap around and then that's going to meet up. So there's only two joins, which is pretty good. I like to make the joins on the corners if possible when I'm doing rectangle shades. It just makes more sense that way. But look, sometimes you can't avoid a join in the middle, but when you're sort of joining together two pieces like this, it, it makes sense, so it's okay. All right, now's the time to paste it up. So the beginning is tricky because you'll want to lay it out nicely straight with the edges of the shade. Um, here I wasn't happy with how it was lining up as I was wrapping it around, so as long as I'm quick about it, the paper can be pulled off and readjusted. At this point, I've realised I don't like that white strip, it's unnecessary. So even when the paper's wet, I can still carefully cut it off. Yeah, much better. Give the bench top a wipe off for all the excess paste, and it's important to dry it off too, otherwise the underside of the paper might stick to the bench. As I join the last section, there's a lot of overhang, so I'm folding exactly where I want to make the cut and I'm cutting on the fold line. Nice. Great. Now all we have to do is let it dry overnight. So the reason why I've let it dry overnight, the paper gets a chance to become strong again. It gets weak when it's wet, which is obviously what helps us to wrap it around 
and to sort of attach itself to the shade material. But we want it to be dry again and be strong so that when we do wet these edges and start tucking them into the seams of the shade, we're not going to leave fingerprints as we're sort of pressing, you know, the paper all the way around. If I tried to do it yesterday, I, I risked kind of leaving these fingerprints and finger marks around the corners where you start pressing. So it really is better just to let it all reset, let it start again, and then we can get these corners in and leave it looking really neat. So what you're going to want to do before you um, start pasting is just figure out where you want the edges to go. And the easiest way to do this, as I've probably shown you in the other tutorial, is just fold the paper down. I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. And just get your fingers and kind of dig them, dig the paper kind of down into the seam. So just tuck it right in and kind of try and fold it kind of right where the, you sort of want the paper to end. It'll pretty much follow where the material that's already there is going to end. So if you tuck it in, now sometimes, sometimes you might find that it's kind of right where you need it to be and you don't need to cut it. But if you do this method, I promise you what you're going to end up with, I don't know if you can see, but there's a kind of a line in the fold and that's where you need to cut. It's as simple as that. So as I said, you know, if it's shorter paper and it's only just tucking in over the edges, fine. It's beautiful, you don't need to do anything more. But in order just to get that perfect kind of meet exactly where you kind of want it to go, fold in, get it right into the seam, fold it back out, and then follow the line with the scissors around the fold, and that's when you can start pasting, because you'll be ready to go. Uh, so I brought you down to my little basement makeshift photography studio just so I can show you the final result. So since I last showed you I was just sticking down the edges so what I've done since then is I've let it dry completely and then lacquered it. What I will say about lacquering when you're using um, a shade that's got um, definite edges like a rectangle shade like this is just be really careful about as you're going around the corners, you can get drip marks around the corners really easily. So just be really careful and really methodical when you're going around the corners and try not to apply, probably less is more, apply less lacquer when you're going around the corners um, and just go over them again, just to make sure there's no thick bits that are gonna leave drip marks. And that's about the only tip I can give you, otherwise it's just lacquering. Uh, it's the same as lacquering anything else. So, so it's all done. It's pretty cool, huh? It's just got a really great effect. And, you know, in a lounge room or a bedroom or just about any room where you have one of these map lamps, it just has a really beautiful lighting effect. So, I can't wait to package this lamp up and give it as a gift to my friends. And I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Maybe you can make a map lamp for yourself or um, as a gift as well. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.